I built this PC back in 2016. I know that's really old, but it's been running pretty great regardless. Around 2020, it started to give me some issues with high temperatures. I cleaned it as best I could and reapplied thermal paste and it solved that issue. I've been using another system for a few years now, but I recently cleaned it as best I could in January of 2024 in order to be able to game with my little brother. I wanted to surprise him for his birthday with a hand-me-down PC that would still run pretty well for him. After the most recent clean, I got the PC to boot, but there's no visual response at all. Also, my rear fan stopped working when anything else is connected to the motherboard and this has never happened before. I tried connecting monitors to the motherboard through VGA, HDMI, and DVI-D. I've also tried connecting displays through my 1050 Ti via HDMI and DisplayPort. None have worked so far. I've checked all connections and everything seems to be fine and in place. I've taken pretty decent care of this PC over the years and I don't know any possible fixes there may be. This here is that viewer's broken gaming PC. We gonna fix it in this one. Now, at first glance, you might be thinking, Greg, why bother? Why waste the time on a rig that is as cheap as this, as old as this? Shouldn't you just, I don't know, junk it, give away the components piece by piece and build something from scratch? And you could make that argument, yes, but for some folks, this is a perfectly viable gaming PC. In 720p, some light 1080p, it's a humble build, and I still want to try to fix it in this video. It just might require a bit of overhauling. This is an old platform, an old graphics card as well. And judging from the descriptions of the issues, it's possible we're dealing with a dead graphics card. That's just my initial impression. This viewer took a train all the way from Miami just to have us try our luck at fixing this thing. And uh, well, we're gonna give it our best shot. Are you ready? Stay with me. The new A115 air cooler from Corsair packs two AF140 Elite fans into a dual tower array with six beefy 6mm heat pipes for powerful heat transfer. Pre-applied XTM70 thermal paste and slim slide and lock fan mounts add to the ergonomics, while 90 nickel-plated cooling fins and an overhauled retention system ensure excellent cooling efficiency. The A115 supports the latest sockets for both Intel and AMD and ships with Corsair's five-year warranty for peace of mind. Learn more by clicking the link below. Hey there, and welcome to Fix or Flop. My name's Greg, and in this playlist, we attempt to fix viewer systems for free in the Orlando, Florida area. That's right, zero dollars, zero cents, charged to the owner in question, including replacing hardware. The reason why we can do this is because all of you are so willing to watch these videos. It is such a, 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 an honor, really, and uh, just I'm super appreciative that we've been able to keep this going as long as we have. So thank you for your viewership, and uh, yeah, let's jump straight into this one. I think I think we'll be able to fix it relatively easily. It does sound like a hardware-related issue. Those are so much easier to fix than software-related ones. And I have the spec list here in case you're curious. So this being an older platform, Z97 means we're running an Intel 4000 series CPU, in particular, the Core i5-4690K. The graphics card is obviously an EVGA 1050 Ti. We have a 600 watt, 80 plus bronze EVGA power supply in here, and a couple of storage drives, a 240 gig SSD, and a one terabyte hard disk drive. 16 gigs of RAM accompany the platform, and this case is from Raid Max, uh, the design of which definitely suits the age of this build. First things first, we need a baseline. We need to attempt to power the system on and replicate the issue described by the owner, which if you recall, is that the system powers on but doesn't send a picture to the monitor, which, um, well, we've run into that several times already in this season alone. Where's the, where's the power button? Oh, there it is, okay. <laughs> I was about to ask Raymond for help. I have no idea where it is on this case. Okay. Fans are moving fairly quick. Has that old PC smell. You guys know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, nothing to our portable monitor and I do have power running to it. Just to confirm on camera here, it should be showing something but no signal. So where do we begin? Just quickly glancing at connections. Sometimes if the card's not inserted all the way or if we're not getting adequate power to the motherboard, the eight pin up top here, all of this seems connected. Uh, just nothing really sticking out from the get go. Nothing miswired on the front panel side of things. Uh, we can try clearing the CMOS. That won't take too long. And um, 
It looks like the pins are actually right here. We're gonna jump JBAT1 for about 10 to 20 seconds. Now, I don't think this is gonna fix anything, but it's worth a shot because it's so easy to do. But still a black screen. I'm gonna check behind this right panel now. To keep, keep coming. There you go, nice, all right. So, what are we, uh, welcome to back here. Okay, pretty much a whole lot of nothing. I mean, they worked with what little space they had at their disposal, but uh, looks like things are hooked up correctly back here as well. This is a non-modular power supply, so I'm not worried about cables coming disconnected from the PSU side of this uh, setup here. Now, the owner did mention in his description something about the system behaving slightly differently when the HDMI cable was connected to the motherboard. We do have integrated graphics, although I don't recommend you actually connecting a display cable to your motherboard unless you have a very specific reason to do so. So I figured we should try to replicate that and, um... Whoa, 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 whoa. Do you see what I see in there? So, like, if USB ports wore braces, this one definitely didn't. Those teeth are all jacked up. I'm gonna demonstrate what happens when you try to insert a USB drive into, you see, there's just no way. And actually, now that I'm, now that I'm looking at it closer, it looks like something was connected here and then it was ripped violently toward the left side panel because this bracket in between both type A ports here is bent that way. So, oh, it definitely looks like someone just snapped it. That would explain why the teeth look as bad as they do, and we might even have some sort of short here. I mean, the reason why I really want to focus on this because it looks like there's there, there's something going on. So I've got some needle nose pliers. I'm just gonna try to pull these teeth back from the bracket that they appear to be making contact with. So if we do have some sort of short from this port, if we can do that, then uh, that I think will be a job well done because I do not have a replacement Z97 motherboard. They're a bit too old. And uh, that's gonna mean that I have to buy one on eBay if this doesn't work out. So yeah, this will do. 12 seconds later. So we powered back on, still nothing, but I tried connecting to the HDMI port at the back of the motherboard because again, I heard some weird things happen when that happens. So here we go. I want you to watch what happens to this rear exhaust fan. All right. It's disconnected. I'm not joking. All I did was connect the HDMI cable. That fan just completely cut off. And then check this out. I'm gonna rip the cable back out. And it starts up again. <laughs> What is going on? Super sus. I'm just not, I'm not liking the vibe I'm getting from this motherboard. I initially thought it was the graphics card, but now that I'm seeing how this board is behaving, I'm afraid the card might have been killed by the board if the card is dead. And if the card's not dead, I certainly don't want to put one of my known working cards in a board that is exhibiting strange power symptoms. So uh, what I want to do is replace the platform out right now. I don't have something as old as Z97 on hand. Yes, we could order something from eBay, but I do happen to have this random Z270 motherboard laying around. And well, this would be a decent upgrade. Obviously it's still very old, but it's a two generation bump. And I do have a Core i5 6500. So still a Core i5 system. Granted, you can't overclock, but he doesn't have an overclockable, uh, well, it doesn't have frankly a very friendly overclocking CPU cooler attached. We need to get this platform assembled, ready to go. It's gonna rely on DDR4, so new RAM, new board, and new CPU. Totally fine though, because this is all so old. So out comes our 1050 Ti. I'll have to take it out anyway to replace the platform in here. So far visually, everything here looks to be okay. It is a tad dirty, but uh, actually fairly clean when you consider how old it is. And from what I can tell, SMDs on the back side of this PCB also look okay. So uh, hopefully, hopefully this thing is salvageable. Bit of a makeshift test bench here with that replacement motherboard, the 6500 installed, of course the 1050 Ti, and I've got 16 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum DDR4 in white, which looks spectacular. I'm gonna include those with the platform if indeed a platform replacement is warranted, and I believe it is. Uh, we've got our Nightjar PSU, trusty, tried and true, we know this works, connected. Uh, we have not connected any of his storage drives yet, so that's the one other variable we haven't accounted for just yet, but I want to see if we can even get power on. We don't have a cooler attached to the CPU just yet, but we're not going to leave it on long enough to find out. All right, so it looks like we've got power on the board so far. I'm just going to be tapping uh, occasionally on the chip to make sure it doesn't overheat. Uh, so far though, look at that. Look at that. That means our suspicions 
our, our new suspicions are true, the graphics card is actually totally fine. And it's likely something with either the motherboard or the CPU. I suspect the board because again, we've got that trash USB port and some strange fan behavior. I'm gonna power up the original power supply just to make sure that things are okay here. Uh, well, that, uh, that could explain some, what are we missing here? Looks like a five volt rail issue. That's not good. You know, I wanna try something. We're gonna connect our trusty Nightjar PSU that again we know works to this motherboard. Is it possible that the power supply in the original rig was keeping things from working properly? It, this definitely seems like a motherboard issue, but now that we're getting that five volt error, uh, I just wanna be on the safe side. So let's power on and let's power on up front. Well, this fan still isn't turning. Now that we've got the HDMI cable connected, you can see there it's just dead. So that's still not a good sign. It's possibly either the power supply killed the board or the board killed the power supply, or at least part of the power supply. So this is turning into yet another multi-component rebuild, essentially, to get things up and running, which um, look, I'm okay with. It, it's, not, it's not something that, that really should surprise me. This is what I signed up for. I'm just curious because we haven't actually addressed, perhaps the elephant in the room, the socket here. The chip itself, that looks okay. The socket, um, ooh, a couple places, yeah. Oh yeah, there, there's like pins touching other pins. I know we're not gonna be able to get this on camera right away, but uh, right here on the right inside of the socket, you can see there's like two or three pins that are bent, looks like to the right from your perspective. And um, that, that definitely could explain why we're seeing some weird behavior from this platform. In hindsight, we definitely should have looked there sooner. We've run into so many like bent pin situations in Fix or Flop. I don't know why I was just so sidetracked on not only the USB issue, but also the weird HDMI fan power thing. And then the power supply gave us an error. And then now we see bent pins. It's just like one thing after another. I, I'm not sure if fixing the pins is gonna fix all of our issues, but it's worth a shot. I mean, at this point, I've already committed to giving him a new platform. So he'll get that regardless. Let's see if we can still fix this old board. Trusty sewing needle time. This is especially tough from this angle. I should be taking this motherboard out of the case, but we need to get these pins moved to the left. The problem is they're touching the pins on their right, so it's difficult to separate them. A few moments later. I spent some time straightening them out as best I could. I think it looks pretty good now, considering where we starting to see up close here. These pins are um, about as in line as I could get them without risking them snapping off, in which case you've just got a really big paperweight. So now we're gonna throw the original CPU back in and see if this alone will fix our power issues. So now I've got the power supply I intend to replace with his original unit connected. This I know works as well, but we've got this connected to the original board, original CPU, just with the fixed pins this time around. I've got the HDMI cable plugged into the motherboard. Remember this before was keeping the fan from turning on, we do have integrated graphics, so if this works, we should still get a picture. I'm obviously not gonna leave it on long because we don't have a CPU cooler attached, but I figured, what the heck, it's worth a shot. So, oh, that fan is spinning. That's, uh, I don't know why I'm so excited about that, <laughs> but whoa, 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 whoa. Did you see that? This thing fired up so fast. We fixed it. And I definitely overcommitted too early with all of this replacement hardware. But, but I'm a nice guy. We already said on camera we were gonna give it to him. This is my fault for just diving too deep into one direction, just misled myself because of the weird mixed signals we were getting from this thing. It was just bent pins and possibly a defective power supply, but we're just gonna replace that anyway. And, uh, I'm just, I'm just stunned. I'm stunned that that was what did it. Bent pins. The win though is that we have a working motherboard again, just with a completely busted USB port for some reason and a questionable power supply. So uh, we're gonna bypass both of those entirely by upgrading his platform to something a couple generations newer and upgrading the 
power supply. Again, with this beefy Enermax unit, that is a 1200 watt PSU. It's definitely way, way, way more than he needs, but it will give him room to upgrade down the line. He can recycle this unit for years to come. But doing a bit of cable management, uh, now that the new platform is in, just making sure that we can hide things wherever possible. Actually, I think I'm gonna turn this fan side down since we do have a grill built in. That was nice of Raid Max here. So it'll sit like that. And uh, yeah, just a 24 pin, eight pin, and maybe some SATA power for our drives and we'll be good to go. One SATA power here and a, n it's a little tangled and another SATA power right here. Here, you getting all that, Raymond? Just some finishing touches now, buttoning things up. I've had to run the primary cables in front of the board, but I've tried to keep them as out of the way as possible. This case is just a little limiting in terms of cable management. <sighs> well, we were pulled in all sorts of directions in this video. We are finally at the point where we can power on, hopefully for the last time, hopefully we get a post with a new motherboard, a new CPU, new DDR4, and a new power supply. What the heck, why not? Ow. 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 Played a little fast and loose there with the CPU cooler and the cable. It's good now. Do we have a post though? Bruh. Oh no. What? what? What did we do wrong? <laughs> I don't know where to go from here. <sighs> yeah, dude, I'll be honest, I'm kind of at a loss here. Oh, hold on, eight pin wasn't all the way in. Now it's all the way in. Uh, that'll make a difference. Are you still filming? Yeah. Oh, okay. No. Wow. <laughs> you guys got that live. All right, so uh, might have been user error. Okay, just cut me some slack. All right, we've been we've been through some stuff in this episode. Okay, partly self-inflicted. I'll admit. All right, but it's a learning experience. We're not gonna keep that from you guys. When we make mistakes, it's gonna end up in the video because I just feel like there's a lot you can learn from screwing up. Look at that. There's our post. And since we have the drives connected now for the first time since powering this on to begin with, I wanna see if we can get into Windows. For some reason the fans are just blasting full speed right now. It might be because we have a new motherboard with a new BIOS. Things are happening. And there we go, with some patience, we're finally onto the Windows splash page, which means mission accomplished, even though it took a lot of trial and errors to get there. I know when this is all cut up and published, it's not gonna seem like we did a ton, but because of my own kind of headstrong beliefs and what was actually wrong with this, uh, we ended up spending a lot more time than we probably should have, and I'm a bit exhausted by this one. So uh, let this be a lesson to those who, you know, are used to getting these like hunches and then they have a knack for just following them down crazy rabbit holes that lead to nowhere. Ben pins is really about it. Questionable power supply, we tossed that out just to be on the safe side. That was really all we had to do was bend some pins back. And I ended up swapping the entire platform out instead because I failed to really thoroughly check the platform before just ruling it null and void with some sort of mystery power issue. So uh, yeah, bent pins can cause a lot of weird problems. Let this be a lesson. You could even get some weird fan power delivery issues with like HDMI, just stuff that frankly we've never seen before. It was pretty bizarre to witness in person, but uh, bent pins will do it. With that, I think it's about time to wrap this one up. We're gonna put the side panel back on and uh, get it ready for delivery again. This owner's gonna be traveling up the bright line once more to pick this up and take it back to Miami with him. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of this one. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you have not already. That subscribe button is 
it, just just click it if you haven't already. Graham is gonna put it somewhere on screen, but uh, that real one, you should click the real one because that's gonna be a huge help for us. If you wanna give the video a thumbs up, that'd be appreciated. Did I already say that? Did I say give the video a thumbs up already? I always forget if I say that. I, should, I just need to like pick an order. Like either I'm gonna say subscribe first or like the video first, and I just need to stick with that forever. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next one. You can tell it's been a long, long day. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.